In this video, we're talking about how you vlog using your smartphone. And I teamed up with the master of smartphone video creation, D. Nimmin, and we're gonna bring you a bunch of different tips and things that you need to think about when you're vlogging only using your phone. Now to shoot a vlog, you really don't need all this fancy gear that everyone's talking about. You don't need to build out this crazy camera setup. You honestly just need your phone to start making videos and start making videos that people actually want to watch. And so we're gonna go through not only some of the techniques and skills and gear that you can use with your phone to be able to get better vlogs, but also I'm gonna talk about some of the things you should think about on how to get your videos seen and how to get people to actually care about the videos that you're creating. All right, so I'm gonna let D take it from here and we're gonna go through some tips on how to vlog using your smartphone. Hey, Jevin, thanks for bringing me back. I'm gonna start with the number one thing that usually stops people from beginning to vlog. Vlogging in public. So many people are intimidated to go out in a public setting and hit that record button on their phone. But the truth of the matter is, no one cares. We live in a time where people are going around, they're FaceTiming, they're making phone calls, they're taking selfies, they're vlogging, they're using Snapchat, they're making Facebook stories. Everybody's on their phone, everybody's out taking pictures or filming. So you, out in a public setting, vlogging, you're not gonna stand out. Nobody cares. These people just walked by me. They didn't even look to see what I was doing. But when I first started, the first time I went out and filmed something in public, I was terrified. I was intimidated. I was thinking, what are they going to think? But then it dawned on me, they're not going to think anything. They're not going to think anything at all. So once I started vlogging and once I started pushing through, it took me a couple of videos before I started to feel really comfortable. But then once I did, I don't think about it anymore. I can literally go anywhere, pull out my phone and start vlogging and not give a care about what anybody thinks. It's just a fear that we have. It's a hurdle that we need to jump over. And the more you do it, the more you're just not going to care what other people think. And that's really the key to all of this is not caring what other people think. So I agree with D on this one. Getting over your fear of vlogging in public is probably one of the number one things that's gonna hinder you. And I know it's tough. It's hard to get out there and film with people staring at you, but I have a few tips for you on how to make this a lot easier and actually get better at doing this. So my first tip is start in places where you're less likely to get seen. So right now I'm kind of a little bit away from the farmer's market, so I'm off by myself, but I'm still out in public. So you can work your way up to the comfort level where you are vlogging in like very busy places, but you know, just starting in areas that are outside and places where you know you might get seen is a good stepping stone to get to the point where you're vlogging in public places where people are you know all over. So my next tip is get out there and vlog with friends, family, or Rachel. With me? Yeah. No, when you have someone around you that like you know, it makes it much Especially, easier. Yeah, because you're boring, so you don't want to just be you. <laughs> Thanks. But uh, it just makes it so much easier to vlog in public when you have someone around you that knows what you're doing, knows who you are, and also could just give you some feedback. So the next tip is break down what you're saying into bite-sized chunks. So if you break everything down into like a sentence or two, a thought, and then move to the next location, it's gonna make it much easier to be in public and shoot because you're not sitting here for 10 minutes holding the camera trying to get something out. You really just have to pull it up, grab a quick little snippet, keep going on. And then it actually makes the video more interesting as well because you have the environment changing behind you as you're creating your video. And when it comes down to it, you just have to go for it. It gets easier the more you just do it. So the more that you're around people and vlogging, the easier it's gonna be. And it's just, you gotta get over that hump and you just gotta go for it. So go out there and, you know, have people stare at you. It's not a big deal. What's your number one vlog tip? You don't have to get all ready, just be yourself. Hey, that's a good one. That's a good one. Now let's talk about what you actually need to start vlogging. The first thing you need is your smartphone and the phone you have in your pocket or the phone that you're watching this video with, that's good enough to get started. And it doesn't matter if you're on Android or iOS, the only thing that matters is it has a camera and you're able to edit even on a basic level the vlog that you create. And you might be thinking, okay, that's great, the phone that I have in my pocket is good enough to get started, but is the camera inside of the phone really good enough to make good looking videos? And the answer to that is probably, it depends on what phone phone you have. If you have one of the newer flagship phones that have come out in the past few years, the camera inside your phone is definitely good enough. If you have an older phone and the camera
camera is not so good. If you're an Android user, check out the Open Camera app or the Moment Camera Pro app. If you're an iOS user and you want more manual controls, check out the Moment Camera Pro app or Filmic Pro. All of these apps are great apps. They allow you to change the frame rate. And by the way, that's how a lot of vloggers get that buttery smooth B-roll footage that you always see. They change the frame rate to 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second. They shoot the clip, they pull that clip into their video editor and then they slow it down. That's gonna give you that smooth B-roll that so many vloggers use. Now, just a quick note, I have been shooting this entire thing just on my phone with no attachments. So you're just seeing the front facing camera with the audio from my iPhone 11. And that's the beauty of using just a smartphone is you don't need tons of fancy gear. Now there's things you can add. And so let's talk about B-roll and getting like cinematic B-roll. That's such a hot topic. And something when you're shooting your vlogs is you wanna get some B-roll that really shows off what you're doing. So a few things that you should think about when shooting B-roll. First is you wanna treat your camera, your phone, as a big motion picture camera. And that's gonna be how you're going to get the best looking footage. So you wouldn't whip your big red Ari Alexa camera all over. It, it just wouldn't look good. You want slow, subtle motion, and that's how you create that really cinematic look. So a lot of times I like to use a gimbal. Now I've done a ton of smartphone gimbal reviews and comparisons, and I'll put a link down below in the description to where you can see all of those so you can make the best possible decision when buying one of these gimbals. However, when it comes to a gimbal, the idea is creating cinematic motion with your B-roll. And so you wanna do slow moves, like a slow dolly from left to right, or a slow punch in, or a slow punch out. And having that really smooth footage is how you get cinematic looking footage. Now also, like Dee said, slow motion's great. Most phones nowadays have a slow motion setting, so use some slow motion to create cinematic footage. But also one huge tip is get out of the habit of always shooting eye level. So because the screen is in front of our face, we tend to shoot at our eye level, which makes all the footage look the same. So you wanna like get down low, you wanna shoot shots where you're just above the ground or way up high. You wanna get creative with what you're shooting and try to avoid always shooting from the same perspective. So change up the look of your footage and give yourself different perspectives, different angles and shoot sequences. And I'll put a playlist in the description so you guys can dig more into that if you want to shoot cinematic looking B-roll. There you go. <laughs> so now you've shot all of your vlog footage and you need to edit that footage. No problem if you're an Android user, check out KineMaster or PowerDirector. And if you need something free, check out Vlogit. If you're an iOS user, check out VideoLeap, LumaFusion, KineMaster, or iMovie because iMovie is the one that came with your iPhone or your iPad. All of these are great video editing apps, but of course, try them all out and find the one that works best for your workflow and that works the best for your device. Hey boy, hey boy. This is a temple dog. <laughs> hey boy. While Dee is in Thailand playing with the temple dogs, I'm actually in Santa Monica, California, where the weather is not the best. It's not your typical sunny day. It's just stopped raining. But one of the things that I think really plagues creators is figuring out what to shoot. So you really need to have a clear vision of what you wanna do. But first you just need to think about why are you here on the platform? So if you're here just to make videos to have fun, you can really shoot whatever you want, to be honest. Like there's really no pressure for you to grow a channel to make money doing that if you're just doing it for fun. And that's what I originally started my channel for. But if you have more of an idea of what you're looking to do, so if you want to grow a following, or if you want to build a business, then you need to have a little bit more thought put into the content that you're creating. And so a lot of it comes down to who are you trying to target? So who is your target audience? So say your channel is a fitness based channel and you want to teach people how to live a fit and healthy lifestyle. Well, there's a bunch of different topics that kind of swirl around that same audience. You can do fitness, you can do nutrition, you can do some cooking stuff. And your vlogs can all be centered around the center, this idea of how to live a better and healthier lifestyle. Now, if you were to just throw in a random video where you went to like a car show and it's just your vlog going through that car show, well, that has nothing to do with your central topic and your target audience. Now, you might think that it's super interesting and you got some really cool shots and it's really exciting, but you really have to think who is the audience. And once you start looking at who the audience is, then you're gonna not want to put videos on your channel that don't satisfy that audience. 
The idea is that hyper-focused, hyper-targeted niches with target audiences are gonna grow much better than if you're just creating content all over the place. If you're thinking about getting a microphone for your smartphone, that's probably a good idea because audio is 50% of the experience. However, it's not necessary to get started. But if you do wanna get a microphone to vlog with, I recommend getting one that connects to your headphone jack or your lightning port. If you use a lapel microphone, the kind that comes with a cable, then you have to worry about untangling the cable before you go out to vlog, and that could slow you down if you're trying to run and gun. Some great microphones are the Rode Video Mic Me and the Rode Video Mic Me L. Ensure makes a microphone just for iOS users called the MV88 Plus, which actually comes as a kit. You get the microphone, a small tripod, and the tripod doubles as a handle. And if you do find that you wanna go with the lavalier and you do wanna get a cable, I recommend getting one with the shortest cable possible. When you're reading the reviews or the specs on Amazon or B&H, it will tell you how long the cable actually is. You also wanna think about how you're actually going to hold the phone when you're out vlogging, and you have a few options here. Of course, you can go the free route and just hold the phone in your hand, and that works if you don't have a mic that needs to be attached to something or an external light, but if you can plug the mic into your phone or you don't have a mic at all, holding it in your hand works just fine. You also have the stick option, which comes with a mount. You put your phone in the top. This is great for holding the phone. This is actually one of my favorites. However, it's not great for setting down. So if you wanna put it on a table and film yourself speaking, you're either gonna to have to play the balancing act or you're gonna to have to get a little tripod that screws into the bottom of the stick if it doesn't come with it. There are also the gorilla type grips that you see so many vloggers using. These are flexible, they bend. Uh, some of the cheaper ones, they might break, the legs might pop off, but they do pop right back on. Also, some of the cheaper ones, they do wear out and they get loose, so you will have to replace it eventually. But these are a great affordable solution. You put your phone right on the top. You can bend it and shape it and wrap it around things like doorknobs or even hang it upside down or put it in a tree branch. This is a very versatile way of holding your phone. Another Another solution is a low profile tripod. These sit low to the ground or low to the table. They come with a mount. You can hold them in your hand when you fold them up. Easy to toss in a bag. These are really versatile, really good thing to have, and they're usually not very expensive. So the next tip is directed at those of you who really want to grow your following here on YouTube. So to be able to grow a following, you need to focus on search-based topics. And I break this up into two categories. I have timeless and time sensitive. And I consider this video a timeless video because in a year from now, you could watch this video and you still will be able to pull some things out of this video that will relate to what you're doing at that time. Now, time sensitive videos might be something like a new product that just came out. So the DJI Mavic Mini, that is the product that just came out recently. If you do videos around that product right now, they're gonna get a ton of attention. And both of these types of topics need to fall under search-based traffic. So content that people are gonna be looking for on YouTube and not have to find through suggestion. Now, obviously your videos will get promoted through suggestion once they start getting some momentum. But the idea is when you focus on search-based videos, you can create videos that will draw in an audience and don't rely on the algorithm to be able to be seen. Because if you're creating around topics that people are searching for, then people will find your videos eventually. And yes, it's gonna take time. Like you're not gonna get a huge boost right out of the gate, but you never know when that one video takes off that's highly searched for. For me, that was the DJI Mavic Pro when that first came out. I made a video about that and it made my channel explode. And I was growing very slow until that point, but I was doing search-based videos and eventually one of them took off. So let me give you three tools that you can use to find which keywords to target. So once you have a topic, once you have an idea of what you're gonna search, just go into YouTube and you know that search bar right at the top? Start typing in phrases that people might type in to find the videos that you're creating. And so for the DJI Mavic Mini, I might type in DJI Mavic Mini, and then I'm gonna let it sit there for a second and see all the results that pop up underneath it. There's a bunch of results here, and they're all topics that are being searched on YouTube around the Mavic Mini. It's a great resource to use to figure out what keywords to even target and even what topics to shoot around this product. Now, another tool that I use is TubeBuddy, and it's the same type of thing. You can type in a keyword, pull up the TubeBuddy tool. It's gonna show how relevant that is. So it's gonna give you the amount of monthly searches that a topic or a specific keyword phrase is getting. And it's also gonna show related keywords. So these are great places to look at to start figuring out what topics to even shoot that are being searched. Now, the third tool that I use is Morning Fame. This is a newer tool. 
And I love this because there is a whole keyword research tool that takes you step by step to figure out the best keywords to target. And it walks you through how to title your videos so that they're gonna help you rank in the YouTube search. And this is all geared towards your channel. So you put in your channel into Morning Fame and it's gonna tell you whether this is a good idea to do or not. And it's gonna give you a grade rating. So these tools are very helpful in finding those topics and terms that are getting highly searched. And the idea for using something like TubeBuddy and Morning Fame is to get your videos to rank higher in the system so that when someone types in DJI Mavic Mini, then my video is gonna pop up on that first page of search results so that it gets clicked on. And so the ranking system is huge. And if you can target keywords that people aren't necessarily using, but people are searching for, that's your golden ticket to getting a video to start taking off and building momentum for your channel. And I'll put a link down below in the description to other videos that I've done all about this. And I dig into a lot of this in my YouTube Growth Academy course that I have on the creatorfilmschool.com. So tons of resources for you to learn keyword research and really figure out how to get your videos to rank higher in the YouTube system. Now let's talk about wide angle lenses for a moment. First of all, you don't need them, but they are really convenient. And let me explain why. Look at the environment around me. Look at how much room is around me right now as I'm speaking. Now let me take the wide angle lens off and you're gonna see how much closer I am to the lens now and how little of what was once behind me is showing in the shot right now. Now these things come in really handy if you're shooting in a small room, if you're shooting in a car, or maybe you're into van life and you need a lens to shoot inside of your van to capture more of your van. This little thing does the trick. Now when you're outside vlogging and you're walking around, there's something that you really need to be aware of. And that's if a car drives by you and the music is playing or you walk past a bar or a store and they're playing music out of the speakers in the front. You cannot put that in your vlog. You do run the risk of getting hit with a copyright claim or a copyright strike on your YouTube channel. Having said that, if you wanna replace the music that you accidentally picked up or you wanna put some great tracks on top of your vlogs, there's some awesome music resources that you should check out. If you're on a budget or you need to go free check out the YouTube audio library all of those tracks are free they're made by YouTube but you need to make sure that you sort them by attribution so you give proper credit to the songs that are requiring it you also have paid options like epidemic sound and music bed they have huge music libraries this is where a lot of your top youtubers get their music and if you're part of these services you get access to their entire library so you can put some really good tracks on top of your vlogs so personally I use soundstripe for all of my music I like their library and I like their interface. It's just super easy to use and just works well. So let's talk about keeping people entertained throughout your vlogs. So you've done awesome titles, thumbnails, you've got someone hooked, they are ready to watch your video. Now what could go wrong is that you just bore them by putting a bunch of scenes in there that don't make sense. You have to use storytelling techniques to be able to keep an audience engaged and keep them interested throughout. So what is the challenge that you're facing for whatever this video is about. What is that problem? Because that's gonna help keep people interested because throughout the video, you're going to try and solve that or you're trying to get to your goal. If there's some sort of journey, if there's some sort of thing that you're up against or some sort of challenge, or that's what keeps people interested. People don't just wanna watch your day, you doing just random things all the time. Like, And so with that, you wanna do a beginning, a middle, and an end. So you wanna set up what's happening. You wanna give the audience some background. You wanna get them into the story. Now the, the middle is the whole journey. So after you set it up and you've put the stakes up and, and the challenge is clear of what's happening, then just the journey of the vlog happens. And that's the entire experience that you're happening throughout the day. And then the ending is a resolution of a sort. So whether you've completed something, you didn't complete something, the challenge is still there. You know, it just, it, you have to have some sort of a resolution that, that gives people a closing, but also you wanna hook them for the next episode. So just putting in a basic level of storytelling into your videos will make them stand out among all the people that are just running around shooting everything and cutting it all into the video. Now, one kind of extreme example of this on my channel is a video I did where I talk about how my drone got taken away from me in Nicaragua. This was a little while ago. The video itself is not very visually pleasing. It's me talking to my phone. However, I tell my story of how I got my drone taken away from me in Nicaragua, and it goes through what happened, the whole journey, and then there's a resolution at the end of it. And that video is in the hundreds of thousands of views. 
and it keeps getting more and more views because it's a story. So people end up watching more of it. They watch the entirety of the video, which causes the YouTube algorithm to push it higher in the ranking system. And this all has to tie back to the watch time. So are people actually sitting there and watching the entirety of your video and then deciding to watch more videos or are they clicking on, watching a couple things and clicking off? All of it plays together in growing your channel. So use some storytelling in your videos, create some sort of an arc. And if you're new to storytelling, I highly suggest digging into just some storytelling basics. Look up some videos around storytelling and just get you know the basic arc down of how you craft a story because it's gonna really help you as a vlogger tell better stories in your videos. If you wanna learn more about vlogging or making content with your smartphone, Jevin's gonna put a link to my channel down in the description below. Come on over, I would love to see you over there so we can carry on this conversation. And Jevin, thanks again. All right guys, I know this was a long video and a ton of information, and I would just wanna say thank you for sticking around till the end. And I wanna say thank you to Dee for jumping in this video and giving you some awesome tips on how to vlog using your phone. All right, guys, if you want to see more videos on how to grow your channel, I highly suggest checking out this playlist on how to get your first 1,000 subscribers. And if you want more tips on how to create better looking videos with your phone, then here's another playlist that dives into all of my cinematic techniques using just a phone. All right, guys, that is it. I'll see you on the next one.